I have told my children that every time they lie, a puppy dies somewhere. <laughs> Use this line on the children. Has it actually stopped them from lying? Well, it certainly seems to have done. Yeah. Because they do care about puppies. Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a relief, actually, that you're saying that didn't result in your children telling loads and loads of lies and getting excited <laughs> by the prospect of puppy death. <laughs> it's heartening on that level. No, I but... don't have sadistic children. <laughs> But it's also bad advice, cos what if a dog goes to attack them and they tell a lie and the dog still gets them? <laughs> Actually... That's it the nearest. <laughs> the nearest, <laughs> nearest dog will die. So you, you just... Know. Well, statistically, you'd hope... Yeah. By osmosis, the yeah. lie will dog, kill... Essentially, you tell the lie, yeah. dog death spreads out from yeah. you till it finds a dog, the dog dies, and then the wave of dog death stops. Can I just ask Joe, why a puppy and not a kitten? She's not sick. <laughs> It was a difficult decision to make. It was a toss-up between a kitten, a puppy and their dad. And <laughs> it's the kind of puppies are the sweetest. What is your verdict? My team say true. You're saying true, yeah? yeah. OK, so, Joe, is it true? It's... a lie. Oh. It's a lie. Oh. Right. Once, on Christmas Day, I was forced to hitchhike my way home and was picked up by four different drivers. <laughs> Please do. Where were you going from and to? I was going from London down to Hastings. How old are you? Uh, I was about 17 and a half. And because nothing was running on Christmas Day or you were skint? No, what happened was I was meant to go home on Christmas Eve, but I missed the last train. So you started your journey in London? I did. And how long did it take to get picked up? For um, the first bit. Not long, actually. Ten minutes-ish. And, and he said... Would, would you like to come back and have Christmas lunch with me? I'm very lonely. Seriously? He said that? Yeah. What sort of a man was he? Uh, he, he was a gay man in his mid-70s. How far did you go with him? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, how far on your journey did you go? He, he dro I think he drove me about ten miles, right. something like that. So that's the first person. Yeah. And then, do you remember the second one? A uh, woman yes. who um, picked me up round about the Eltham area, I oh, think. I like a euphemism early on in the show. <laughs> 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 actually, you're, you're more accurate than you realise. She, uh, she actually did make a pass at me. You, this is two now. Well, um, she said, where do you want to go? <laughs> uh, and I said, down to the coast, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> did she go down to the coast? Well, what she actually did was she put her arm round my neck and tried to kiss me. She did. What had led her to believe that this was a possibility? What had happened? The mistletoe on the wing mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she tried to kiss me, I opened the door and got out of the car and ran away. Ah, so yeah. that's, that explains the second story. Right, okay. now get to the third one. Okay. The, third, the third guy um, was deaf. <laughs> <laughs> He... I'll tell you what, if this turns out to be a lie, you deserve a medal for the... <laughs> for, for making this as least plausible as possible en route to the story. But, OK, so he's deaf. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I, I had to write down where I wanted to go. Uh, and you said Hastings on the card? Yeah. What did he say? He didn't say anything. He just started driving. <laughs> oh, my That's a bit God. menacing, isn't it? <laughs> he didn't look scary. And who was the fourth? The, the fourth was a, a farmer. He said that he was fed up with his family, so he <laughs> took me all the way to Hastings. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's having a bad day on Christmas Day and decides to just he'd rather drive you to Hastings. Well, uh, he said that he told his wife he was going out for a paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end, really, cos he dropped me off where I was going. Did you invite the man in for a mince pie or something? You know? No. You didn't so... even invite him in? No. <laughs> Do you think that's a bit weird? I don't. I think it's the weirdest bit of the story. <laughs> <laughs> He's given you a lift all the way to Hastings no. on Wait, Christmas it... Day. He's the only one who hasn't made a sexual pass at you. <laughs> He's been entirely honourable. Right. Just give him a little bit of a mince pie and some brandy butter. <laughs> 
So what do you think? It, there's a lot of detail in there. I think it's not true. Based on? I think she's just it's just got too many characters, like a Tarantino film. <laughs> <laughs> the bit I'm doubting is that... Wouldn't you just write on a piece of paper, Hastings, and hope someone's going to Hastings, rather than anyone going sort of that way, and I'll just keep getting out and getting out? Have you ever hitched heights? You sound very, very idealistic about it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not getting in a car until I go into Hastings. <laughs> What day of the year it is? <laughs> Hastings, no. <laughs> Paul does have a point. That's I'm not very... how it works. <laughs> you just go a little bit, yeah. and then maybe, and that's part of the fun of of hitchhiking. Well, who you don't mean. try and pretend to me you've ever hitchhiked. I know you well. <laughs> Getting in the back of a Mercedes once a week is not hitchhiking. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it in films, though. <laughs> so, true. Ray thinks it's true. true. It's going to be true. Okay. Too wacky to be made up. So, you think they're too wacky yeah. to be made up? You think they're too wacky to be true? Yeah, I think she, she enjoyed making them up. <laughs> so, what's it going to be, then, Lee? OK, well, we'll, we'll say... Uh, be it on your head, Ray, but we'll say it's the truth. Saying it's the truth. OK, yeah. Joe Brand. Truth or lie? It is... true. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Joe did have to hitchhike home on Christmas Day and was picked up by four different drivers. So... Last year, I made my husband a birthday meal using some mints I found in the street. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what... Why... Well, why? <laughs> Why would you do that? I found a carrier bag on the pavement that, right. that amongst other things, had mints in it. What I don't know whether it? someone had... Left, left it there, whether yeah. they dropped it... Or it wasn't like noticed. being clutched by, like, an old woman who was lying on the... <laughs> You're not being convenient with the truth here, are you? All right, I slapped her out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it, what else was in the bag? Uh, well, there was mints, and it was wrapped up in, in kind of a plastic... Like, in a, one of those cardboard dishes, plastic over it, so yeah. it wasn't, lo <laughs> wasn't yeah. loose. Oh, yeah, it uh, sounds perfectly hygienic. Yeah, well, it was hygienic. How do you know, like, a dog hadn't weed on it? I know it was in the cellophane, Cos but... I sniffed it. <laughs> did you not have any... You can't buy class, can you? <laughs> <laughs> what did you cook him with the mince? Well, I can only cook two things, a spag bowl and macaroni cheese. Which one did you go for? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've known you for a while, Joe. Can I just check? Is it your current husband or the first one who died of food poisoning? <laughs> Uh, my one and only husband. Okay. Oh, it's Chesney Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> so, what do you think, Lee? I don't know. What do you think, Ray? Is this bad enough? Let's say true. True? I think false. You think it's a lie? <laughs> You're saying lie. You're saying true. true. Uh, I'm going to say lie. You're saying lie? Yeah. OK. Joe, truth or lie? It is, of course, a... <laughs> lie! Oh. <laughs> Last year, I ate my Christmas dinner in the bath. <laughs> David's tea. Uh, but why? <laughs> because we had quite a lot of family round and I just wanted to be on my own because I was in a really bad... <laughs> no, and was it on a plate? <laughs> <laughs> that's, it... that's a horrible image, isn't it? <laughs> it was on a plate. <laughs> Hold on. So I'm just going to picture the scene, right? You've got your Christmas dinner on the plate and you just get up to the table and you say, I'm just going off to the bath for a bit. And the I, don't, I don't think I announced it. Oh, didn't. I was just so fed up with everyone. I just got up, took my dinner, went upstairs and thought, I'm going to have a bath. But didn't you find it that you got really hot eating in the bath? I could eat my Christmas dinner in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you put the dinner when you were running the bath? Mm. On the toilet. On the toilet. <laughs> did you did you allow the bath? The, not, the... not with. I mean, with a lid on it, and a, yeah. a nice little table. Even you so, I think it's a bit. Do you? It's, it's just the it's oh. the associations, isn't it, of the two but ends of the process? It was someone else's. <laughs> it's like saying to the food, "This yeah, is where you're going to end up, mate." <laughs> You know it. You know it, I know it. You're going on an incredible journey. Yeah. <laughs> did you continue to eat your Christmas dinner while the bath was running, or did you pause in that process to sort of save it until you were nice and comfy in the bath? I had a cup of sprouts, David. Right. 
Did, did you have like a tray that goes over the side of the bar? Yeah. Yeah. You can put the dinner on, or did you have to balance it on your knees? I had to balance it. On so your you knees? Had, not necessarily. <laughs> If you're balancing it on a part of you, is there not a risk that it will become submerged at some point, which would ruin the dinner? Essentially, you're turning your Christmas dinner into the Maldives in about 30 years' time. <laughs> when, you know, the, the bath water of the world starts to wash the sprouts towards the plug hole. Well, I don't, I don't put enough um, water in the bath for that. In okay. fact, you know, I don't hardly need to put any water in the bath. <laughs> OK. What do you think, David? What, do you, what, are your, what do your team think? I think maybe you had a bath, but you didn't eat your Christmas dinner there. Yeah, I can believe that Joe has had baths <laughs> and, has eaten, <laughs> and has eaten Christmas dinners. I don't believe she's don't ever combined the two processes. I, well, I think, I think she might have done. Oh, you think she yeah, might have done? Oh, yeah. All oh. right. I thought we were heading towards consensus no. there, but <laughs> in a very Christmassy way, we're very much at loggerheads. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Seeing as I feel a little bit 50-50... Yeah. Oh, no, that doesn't help at all, does it? Well, no, it does. Because <laughs> if you're 100% it's true and you're only 50%, it's... Who said I was 100%? I'm about 80. All right. <laughs> I'm going to need a pen. <laughs> this is why I keep saying I need a spreadsheet. <laughs> OK, we're going to say true. Oh, so, good. they're saying true. Joe, eating your Christmas dinner in the bath. Truth or lie? It's a lie. No. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Joe didn't eat her Christmas dinner in the bar. I once got on the tube with a live pigeon in my pocket. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> Why was the pigeon in your pocket? It was quite badly injured. Oh, so you were being a good Samaritan to pigeons? Ish. I was a bit peckish. <laughs> <laughs> you hadn't yet decided. You could go either way. <laughs> what had happened to the pigeon? What happened to it? Yeah. Went very nicely with some roast potato. <laughs> <laughs> no, I took it. I took it to um, <clears throat> actually to the local vets when I got home. So where did you find? It the... was lying on the pavement. And what was the nature of the garment in in the pocket of which you placed the pigeon? It was a clown's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your own fault for standing on it in the first place with your big feet. <laughs> <laughs> it was when, a duffel what, coat. Duffel a duffel coat. coat. A duffel coat. It, <laughs> but, did you think about just carrying it, or did you think, I'll put it in my pocket? Because if it's a pigeon that's struggling, I think it's probably causing it, it more it, pain. It was beyond struggling. It was... It a was... dead pigeon. A dead no. pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was kind of really knackered and... Can I ask, were you going to somewhere when this happened, or were you going back home? I was going to somewhere. So you went to a meeting, possibly a high-level TV meeting, about, there are so, other places available, don't you? I'm <laughs> just guessing. With a pigeon in your pocket. I like the fact you gave it two options, a meeting or a high-level TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to imagine... I was going to the local hospital to have a smear. <laughs> While it was in your pocket, did it start flapping? No. So it was just completely quiet, but not dead, in your pocket. Did you have some seed in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> of course she did! <laughs> we all carry emergency trill. <laughs> what are you thinking, uh, Kimberly? Does it, does it have the ring of truth for you? I think it's a lie. I've, I've saved a pigeon before and it was quite badly hurt. Oh, here we go. Really <laughs> Am I the only person that hasn't only... saved a pigeon? <laughs> I haven't. No, I have I'm a hard time yeah. believing it would sit in the pocket. What, what were the circumstances for you, Kimberly? I was at my flat. Every, my hus now husband was gone, and I... <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Very brave of you to talk about it on the show. There was a lot of commotion outside, so I went to look, and there was a pigeon struggling. But I was worried to touch it, because I thought of diseases and things, so I oh, left it me, and I had me, to go me. away and think. <laughs> what to do? So what did you do? I tweeted about it. Tweeted? <laughs> Did he tweet back? Well, somebody did, and they sent a cab to get the pigeon to take it to the Wildlife Foundation to save it. I really don't believe this. <laughs> 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 it's 
So what are you thinking, David? Uh, well, Kimberly, what do you think? You think it's I true? I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Oh, I think it's a lie. Lie? I think I think oh. we think it's a lie. OK, lie. you're saying lie. Joe, truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> At school, I once rubbed stinging nettles all over my face and told my teacher I was ill so I could go and meet a boy in a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. <laughs> you, the, I mean, the, the, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was a date in the graveyard. Was the boy living? <laughs> was just before we met, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and these, Joe, you say these are your school days, so we're talking about the 1990s. Now, what was the... <laughs> uh, yeah. It's my way Thanks, of being flattering Mark. and gentle. And chivalrous, you say. <laughs> chivalrous. Yeah. When was this, Joe? The 1890s. <laughs> That would have been the late 60s, actually, early late 70s. Late 60s? Yeah. Gosh, OK. So when you walked into the graveyard like this, he must have been shocked to see you. Rob, he was pleased to see me. He knew what he was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> um, whoa, 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 whoa. What was he going to get? <laughs> I bought him a cake. <laughs> so, freshly nettled, you go off, you go and find your teacher. What happens then? Well, I say to the teacher, I'm really not feeling well. I don't know whether I ate something for lunch that's given me some sort of allergic reaction. Can I go home? I mean, I don't know. I've never run a school. <laughs> um, but are you allowed, if a child says they're ill, you're allowed to just say, yeah, off you go? <laughs> Well, I said to her that uh, my mum was at home and I live within walking distance of the school. It was the late 60s, early 70s, very different time. Children hadn't long stopped going up chimneys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay. what do you think? Oh, I think it's so unfeasible, it's probably true, isn't it? Well, that's the wrong way to reason. <laughs> Be unfeasible things are less likely to be true. Yeah, but although the true things are deliberately picked exactly. to be unlikely. Exactly. I travelled here by car, for example, never come up. That would be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can I just check something here? Yeah. Why do you get a car? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a class thing, you know. <laughs> well, they still shouldn't make me drive your car. <laughs> Right, mm. Joe, in the graveyard with what the do you young think? man. It's True. Because it sounds so unlikely. Yeah. I still think it's flawed reasoning, but... <laughs> no, no, true. You're saying that it's true. Yeah. Right, Joe. Truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh. Oh. Very well. Yes, it's a lie. Joe didn't rub stinging nettles over her face to get out of school. Um, I was once favourite to win an athletics event. <laughs> but ended up coming last after an oh. incident in a toilet cubicle. Oh. <laughs> uh, David's team. Well, right. OK, what was, well, what was the athletics what? event? It was a javelin. Uh, uh, the javelin, and, and when were you entered into a javelin competition? Uh, when I was at school. How old were you? Uh, I was about 16. And you were the favourite? I was. Why? Because <laughs> I could chuck it a long way. How but far? How far, roughly? <laughs> Probably... For God's sake, make it less than 110 metres, which is the world <laughs> record. <laughs> Give yourself a fighting chance. 111 metres. <laughs> no, I would say about 20 or 30 metres. Were you also good at running fast? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, to be fair, I think that was a genuine question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I see get the momentum to throw it. Yeah, yeah, OK. I did actually, for a short time, hold the 100-metre record for our school. That was because I was having a fag behind the bike sheds and I heard the dinner bell. <laughs>
What was the incident in the toilet that yes, handicapped yes, your performance? Yes, yes. I was preparing for sports day, the afternoon, so I went in the toilet to have a fag, <laughs> and... <laughs> I had a box of matches, and I struck one to light my fag with, didn't blow it out properly, put it back in the box, and the box exploded in my javelin-throwing <gasps> hand. Oh. Wow. So this is a story about a serious burn. <laughs> yeah, so I had yeah. to throw the javelin at Sports Day with my left hand. Well, Johnny, what, what do you think? How does this strike you? I think it could be true. And you think it's... True. OK, true. You were saying it is true. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, truth or lie? It is true. <laughs> I once ignored a fireman's order to evacuate a building because I assumed he was just a bloke in fancy dress. Please, <laughs> <laughs> Steve. OK, when was this? Uh, when I was at university in 1841. <laughs> uh... Were you the only person who didn't leave? Uh, no, I don't think so. It was like it was a student party. It was sort of fancy dress. Oh, you were all in oh, fancy dress. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. What had you right. gone as? Um, I think I took a pretty easy option and I went uh, as a Roman. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were you wearing? Yeah. Uh, a sheet. It's not a Roman. <laughs> oh, not yeah, a Roman sheet. soldier, just someone yes, who's the... around in the Roman era. A senator, not a centurion. A Roman or a ghost? <laughs> So, who, who, first of all, where was the fire? In, it was in your room? Well, it actually, it, it was a fire alarm. I wasn't in the proper party, but I was in my room in, uh, with the door shut. So, how did the uh, firefighter get in touch with you if you were locked away in your own room? Well, he <laughs> banged on the door and went, fire service. With all due respect to your sheet, you must have been quite impressed with his costume. <laughs> How did the conversation go? Right, I was in my room with someone else. We oh. were busy. Who were you? Oh. 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 Is this how the fire started? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know what you're like, Joe. You like to set fire to them. <laughs> so actually, we were... <laughs> we were revising. Oh, right. <laughs> what was he dressed as? You were a... A Roman, what was this other he person? He wasn't dressed as anything. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a banging. And there's you a banging on the door. And you stand up. <laughs> now, Joe, <laughs> I expect better yes, David, Rob. who was the first person to titter. <laughs> yeah. Let's try and have a, a level tonight, please. <laughs> Joe, there yes. was a banging. On the door. Banging, yes. banging, banging, banging. <laughs> and then you heard the door. What happened? <laughs> What happened was this guy shouted, fire, please leave the building, right? Yes. So I just thought it was some drunk bloke mucking about. Yes, yes. So I said, could you please go elsewhere? What was your gentleman caller's reaction? Uh, or was he still unconscious? <laughs> <laughs> My gentleman caller was was the same as me, very, very entertained. What do you think, Henning? Is she is she telling the truth here? Yeah? There is a few inconsistencies in that song. <laughs> like, Ooh. well, the thing about the fire, I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> we could stop there. Then. <laughs> it's not, to be fair, an inconsistency, is it? There's nothing inconsistent about it. It's just it either happened or it didn't. It's not like a fire and I was in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an inconsistency. <laughs> so you're, what, you're, you're picking holes in Henning's command of the English language. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Perhaps we should continue the rest in German <laughs> to give him a, a fighting chance, yeah? <laughs> well, Simon, what are you thinking? Part of me thinks it's, it could possibly be a lie. You're going to say lie because you think that the story has got inconsistencies? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to annoy David yeah. now. <laughs> I think I go with Simon. So you're going to say it's a lie? Oh, absolutely. With them kind of inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Joe, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? It was, in fact, the truth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's true. 
Jo did ignore a fireman because she thought he was in fancy dress. Uh, this box contains everything I need to play my family's favourite festive game. <gasps> All right, so could you now take the contents out and put them onto the desk, please? Oh. oh. Well, oh. It's, it's, it's a plastic cup. Water. Pen there. Sheet of paper. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks exciting. It, uh, what you do, right, is yeah. you get up the glass. I'm a bit nervous about what you're going to do. <laughs> oh, all right. There we Hello. Go. You come up like with um, like with a category. A category, yes. Yes. Like... Ah! Sorry, I've got cramp in my foot. Just boil with me a minute. Like diseases keep thinking, of the keep knee. Thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you all right? <laughs> That's better, thank you. Carry on. <laughs> so, so you've come up with a category, yes. Yeah, so, and I, I'm going to start the game off. So I think of something in that category, um, and I write that down on a bit of paper. Yes. You have got to come up with something from the category. Yes. Which is trees. Yeah. So you each say a tree. And if anyone says the tree that I've written on the paper, I throw this over them. <laughs> oh, let's play it. Let's play it. What will give you a category. The category is uh, things you might find in a Christmas dinner. So food items in a Christmas dinner. Right, now fold the paper up. Don't let them see it. <gasps> OK. OK. Now, Joe, Lee and, and Joe Swash are your sons. They've no, come no, home. No, 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 no. They're back from the youth detention centre. Would you like my friend Robert to play? <laughs> Yes, Rob, my mum says you can play. Thanks. You can come in and have a play. <laughs> We're all playing the game. Oh, hang on a minute. No, wait a minute. I'm told that my I'm being told that my desk is not waterproof. Oh yeah. But you're no seriously, oh, but, but there's it. Oh no, my god, yes! Hang on, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now my desk also. I'm so sorry. I'm oh, sorry, I've just been told my skin fun. is soluble. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. That's what they're telling me. Oh. So remember now, boys, <laughs> the category is things in a Christmas dinner. <laughs> get ready. Here we go. Let's get the tension. Sorry. OK. Yeah. Lee Mack, oh. something you'd find in a Christmas dinner. OK, I'm going to go for a... Not roast. Ooh. <laughs> oh, the yeah. tension there when she that said was, it. Yeah, wow. yeah. OK, it's... Joe Swash. Uh, a Brussels sprat. Oh, oh, it's back this to Lee. This is unbearable. Oh, <laughs> it's this is a unbearable. Is a great game. I'm going to go for a carrot. Ooh. Oh, Joe Swash. Pigs in blankets. Oh, oh. Lee. Oh, double look me. <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> oh, 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 the oh, Joe Swash. This is an unbelievably stressful game. Uh, Yorkshire pudding. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's not allowed. Yorkshire pudding. Have Yorkshire pudding in my Christmas oh, dinner? No, this is yes. no. only because it's there oh. sat nav for Brussels yeah, sprouts. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, gravy. He said gravy as gravy. well. Gravy. He said gravy. Lee gravy. Mac. Cranberry sauce. <laughs> Joe Swash. A bit of turkey. He no, said turkey. He said turkey. Said turkey. Said turkey. Said turkey. No. OK, I'll go with some carrots. He said carrots! Don't even say carrots! I'll go with some stuffing. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes! Right, right. Oh, so... Oh. Was... thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> was that game <laughs> genuinely something that Joe plays, or did she just make it up, truth or lie? Even if it's not, to come up with that on the spot is brilliant. I'm yeah. playing that on Christmas Day. Well, it's okay. a brilliant game. If Joe invented that game in the last few seconds, <laughs> exactly. reading off a card, then, well, she'd be a genius. <laughs> OK, so what's it going to be, truth or lie? We're going to say true. OK, Joe. This it's incredible a lie, Christmas game. Oh my goodness! Truth me. or lie? It's true. No! Yeah. Yes, it's true. Joe does play the game every Christmas.
My husband and I have agreed that the hour between 7 and 8 p.m. is the only time we're allowed to gripe about our various aches and pains. <laughs> we call this hour the moan zone. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. Uh, between 7 and 8 p.m. Yes. Uh, is that the time you find the aches and pains are most noticeable? No, it's because it's when the one show's on. <laughs> <laughs> And what, what specific aches and pains, Joe? Because I will say you've been rather sprightly this evening. Don't be patronising, though. <laughs> <laughs> you did say that like you were playing Monopoly with your grandmother. <laughs> so, what are the aches and pains, Joe? Well, um, I've got a bad knee. I've got a bad knee, actually, as well. Have you? Yeah. The, What's the... the cause of your bad knee, I don't... Uh, life. You know, oh, life. Uh, okay. the inferior design technique of the creator, should there be one. <laughs> anyway, this isn't about me. So, what happens if you moan outside of those hours? Like, do you I have, like, a, a moan jar where you... You know, the them? other one can say anything they like to the other one to shut them up. Oh. Including the C word. <laughs> Coco. Coco. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> In the hour, is it you first, 7 till 7.30, your aches and pains, and then here's a 7.30 to 8, or do you alternate? I'll see your knee, I raise you a, you know, a coccyx. <laughs> <laughs> this is what David's like when he's chatting up with him. <laughs> well, it's, no, it's not that formal, really. Mm. Is this ringing any bells with you, Lee? I mean, in, in, your, in your household? I would like to get to that age where you can do the chair where you press the button and it helps you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Then, you know what I mean? I tell you what, this is going to steal all those younger viewers back mm. from Netflix, isn't it? <laughs> How old are you, Bobby? I'm a prime number. One more than a square number, but it's a prime number. Oh, well, in that case, you are... Wait, wait, I've got this. I've got this. You are... 36. Yes. Are you, you are a prime number. One more... I am a prime number, yeah. 37. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh. Yes. I mean... Ten points to Gryffindor. Thank you. Joe can't believe that Lee has got the applause when I she said, said 37 six yeah. times. Yeah. Well, yeah. right. We get clever students, we know they've got it correct. Like, in parents' evening, I would say Joe's doing really well, but sometimes students like Lee, we've got to encourage them in the lesson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we think? Joe, what are you thinking about this? Well, it sounds true. To me, I mean, I, I, um, I think it's a bit weird that we wouldn't believe other people. Yeah. Right. We, we may be having a bit of a problem here this evening. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sam, what about you? I, I quite like it. It's very constructive. I think yeah. it could be true. I think we're going to go with true. You're saying true. Okay, Joe, was it true yeah. or was it a lie? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> it's a lie. Joe doesn't have a moan zone with her husband.